All right, everybody, we'll get started in a few minutes. I'm just waiting on our presenter to get on. So as soon as he gets on, then we'll get started. Oh, I see him on here. Okay. Hey, good. Uh, Lynn, I'm going to make you the host if that's okay. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Just remember to admit everyone from the waiting room. Okay, great. All right. It's all yours now. Okay. All right, everybody, I'd uh, like to uh, get started for the afternoon session. And uh, um, we have a presenter uh, joining us this afternoon um, from Strong Minds. Um, we were able to buy a curriculum for our school called Strong, Strong Minds. And um, it's going to be uh, loaded onto the Canvas program. And most of your classes, you're going to see this curriculum on there from Strong Minds. And so we have a presenter here from the Strong Mind company, and he wants to share with you some information about the curriculum and Strong Minds. And so I will turn it over to Brad Sieber. Thank you, Lynn, and thank you, everybody. Um, my name is Brad Sieber, and I represent Strong Mind. And, um, First of all, thank you for this opportunity. We're so excited to get started um, with you guys at Hopi. And um, uh, the purpose today is to really show you a little bit more about the curriculum itself. Um, so I've got to share my screen here. Um, if you guys wouldn't mind, maybe give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm just gonna, just for a few minutes, tell you a little bit about StrongMind, then we're gonna jump in and look at some courses uh, or look at a course live and what that looks like. Um, so that's really my, the two main objectives of this presentation. Um, so the first thing is who are we? Um, well, th there's a lot of information on our website, but basically we, we focus on creating digital curriculum for sixth through 12th graders. So they can be successful and not only graduating, but then going on to whatever they choose, whatever career, college, whatever it is they choose to do. And we're based here in Arizona. Uh, we have about 250 employees. Um, and again, we focus on digital curriculum to help helping make sure students are successful. So usually the first question is, okay, well, what do you offer? Um, well, here's a list and you can see this on our website. Um, here's all the courses we offer. And these are courses um, that you guys will have access access to. It's sixth through 12th grade. Uh, we have the, <clears throat> the um, honors courses, we have core courses, we have electives. Um, and you can see this, the one little area that's blocked out here, um, these are courses, Adobe courses that we don't offer. Um, they're on our website, they just haven't changed those. So as you see, I'm going to show you some of this, um, the, the courses we've created. Um, we've won numerous awards, um, whether that's with our videos, with our images, with our layout, all those things that we focus with you, with the students in mind, when we've created those and, and won those awards. Okay. So um, I think Lynn's already seen this. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. This is a little video that talks a little bit more about um, kind of who we are and, and, and how we create this digital curriculum. Um, and then from there, I'll show you a little bit more of it live. Strong Mind is not only more engaging, but it is on the cutting edge of a lot of educational research and cognitive science as far as the immersive uh, qualities of it. And as we continue to push the boundaries, it's only gonna get better. We always think about how is the student gonna react to this course? How do students learn? How do they think about content? So it's not just that it's immersive content where they get engaged and they get excited about it, but it really, how do we make the content so it's meaningful to them? I think what's great about it for me, though, if I were in the classroom and I were a student, is the fact that it's it's differentiated for all learning styles. We are given uh, quite a bit of creative liberty, 
creative freedom to just explore and innovate uh, new ways to push curriculum experiences. Students, quite frankly, don't even know they're learning half the time. They're enjoying what they're watching, what they're seeing, what they're interacting with. And at the end, when they're taking an assessment, that's when it dawns on them that it wasn't just fun. It was learning. Okay. Hopefully you all were able to see that. And um, again, the, the purpose of that is to kind of give an introduction of, of how we create that and what it means to us so all students are successful. Okay, so let's, um, um, let's look at this live. I'm going to show you a course that's going to be in your uh, Canvas. Um, and we're going to look at this and say, okay, well, what does this look like? Um, and this is a course. And again, I'm sure you guys are aware, but your Canvas is your LMS. It's kind of your, kind of your, I guess, placeholder that holds the courses. We have a strong mind. I want to show you the courses that are inside of that and what those look like, just a sample. Um, this is an Algebra 1 uh, course, um, and you can see all of our courses are set up in semesters. Uh, so we have like Algebra 1A and Algebra 1B. All of our courses have six units and five lessons in each unit. So they go in sequential order. So Unit 1 is going to have lessons 1 through 5. And then unit two will have lessons six through 10, so forth and so on. Okay, um, I'm gonna go in, hopefully you guys can see my screen. You can see this is unit three. And so it's gonna have a lessons 11, 12, 13, all the way down to 15. Um, our lessons are set up in, in no matter what course you're taking, whether you're in middle school, high school, uh, you know, electives, you know, honors, it doesn't matter. There's really three main things that are in each side of our, each side of all of our lessons. There's going to be an introduction that's designed to say, hey, students, this is what you're going to be learning. The next thing is there's going to be activities. Sometimes they call them workbooks. Sometimes they call them projects. Uh, but there's going to be activities you're going to do to make sure you're meeting what it is you need to learn from the um, from the introduction or the objective. And then at the end of each uh, lesson, there's going to be a checkpoint. And that's kind of like a quiz at the end of the lesson. Uh, we have other quizzes or way, way that we're going to test you throughout. But those are the three main components. There's an introduction, there's activities, and there's a quiz we call checkpoints at the end. Now, along with that, um, within each unit, remember a unit, all of our courses contain six units. There's a unit test um, at the end of each unit. At the end of each course, there's a course test. Um, so, Lynn, uh, before I jump in, do you need me to stop and see if there's questions or do you need me to keep going? I can. I think you can keep going. Um, the The students are live, so they're they're on a separate. Um, you know, it links up to that YouTube session. So oh, I don't. Okay. Yeah, I don't think they'd be able to ask, um, ask any questions. So I think you can okay. just keep continuing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll continue on then. Okay. Uh, so we're going to look at just one lesson um, from Strong Mind. This is Algebra One. We're going to look at Lesson Twelve. We're just going to go through a few uh, parts of this. Um, so I'm going to select the introduction. Uh, again, the introduction tells me, you know, this is these are the objectives of this lesson. Now to navigate, it's pretty simple. Um, to go to the next part of this lesson, you just select this button right here, next. So when I select that, it's going to you can you can ignore these things. I'm just going to focus on this inside of here. Now you can see as this loads, um, to scroll down to see all the lesson, you just select this, um, this bar right here and you can scroll down this way. Okay, or when you're done, 
you can select next again to go to uh, the next lesson. If you want to listen to the um, to the audio, if you want to listen, I mean, if you want to listen instead of read, you can select this button and it will actually read it to you. So it's a text to speech. And then as you scroll down, because this is online, there's going to be some different things that you can click. Instead of opening a book, um, sometimes you have to go outside or click things that are maybe maybe in, are interactive. Uh, like here's an example. So the key terms for 12, workbook 12.1, you can select this and it's going to take you to another place, but it's automatically going to open that new browser here, as you can see. And again, I have that audio here if I want it. And I can select down of any of these because these are important work terms for you to understand this part of the lesson. And you can print those. And now it opens up this new um, browser, uh, but I can easily, it doesn't close the one I'm in. So for me to go back, I just go back right here. Okay, so I'm a student. Okay, and so if I look at this, there's a lot of things going on right here, but there's a reason why. You'll see different, see how this is a little bit different size font than this, than this? There's a reason for that. A lot of things we do, think of opening a book and all the, all the words are in the same size font. You know, it just gets kind of overwhelming. So what we do is we break things into small chunks to help you. So this would tell me, hey, this is probably, this is bigger than this. So this is probably the heading. This is what I'm trying to learn. Here's the subheading and here's the heading underneath there. So we continually break things into chunks. And then we add things like images to tie in with what does that text actually mean? And I, I'm just, all I'm doing to scroll down, um, Sorry guys, this may be too much for you all. All I'm doing is I'm just pushing this down on, on my mouse. Again, I can, I can select this and move it this way or I can just go like this and do the same thing, okay? And, and you can see as we go through the different colors, um, there's a plus button here and here's a, here's a, different, um, a different color. Um, and so I can hyperlink or I can select that and it's going to pull up that term because that terms is important for me to know um, this objective of this lesson. And this is math. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of numbers. So as you scroll down, it's going to give you explanation of this problem. Okay, here's something. Okay, so <clears throat> all of our lessons average, not, not all of them, but they average one video per lesson. So some, some lessons may have four or five videos. Some may not have any. You may go through four or five lessons, they might have a single video. But some of them, we average overall about one video. And these videos, we don't put all the videos at the very front of the lesson, the very beginning. Um, we put them where it makes sense. Like as you're trying to learn this, this problem on adding two equations, um, we found out that, hey, this this needs a video to help the students understand. Now, these can be 30 seconds. Um, there's one that's like 12 minutes, but they're really important that you watch these and listen to these. Some of them are animated. Some of them have people like me that used to be teachers. Some of them are by students, but they're, they're really well done and they're really designed to help you. So um, we're gonna watch a little bit of this one. This one's nine minutes on adding two equations. Let's say you have a contextually based situation like this one, and you want to write a system to be able to solve it. How do you know if you should write a system at all? How do you know what the system should say? Well, let's take a look at this example and see if we can start to figure out what makes it a good candidate for writing a system and how to write that system. So Trey is planning to plant a garden in his backyard. The garden will be fenced in with a perimeter of 30 feet. Remember perimeter means. So this is math and, and she's, and, and you can fast forward this if you want or move this around, 
but she's actually going to break down this problem and break down the words um, to help you solve this so you so you have a better understanding. Again, some of these are animated. Um, this is math, so she's going to walk through the steps, but the videos are really important. Um, they can kind of help, you know, it's digital. It's another way um, for you to help learn the lesson. So um, if I'm sure a lot of you, I think now I'm on YouTube, but if you like YouTube, think of it like that. Short, um, they're to the point, and they'll help you get a better understanding of that lesson. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but there's also a transcript of those videos. Okay, and then once you, so, you know, I'm scrolling down here. Okay, here's the video. And, and now, um, again, we, we break things into chunks. Um, we didn't want to have all these words on, all on one page. This is a pretty long lesson. So you can see this little plus here. This is also a part of the lesson. So I can open that just by selecting this button here. It's probably when you open it the first time, it's going to be closed. But this is important for you to know. So I open that. And now it's going to give me a little bit more information about something that I need to know or learn. And then you can see here's a continue button. Okay, this has a step by step problem. Some of the other subjects don't have as much, but again, math, you know, the step by step process. And again, breaking into chunks. So I go, okay, I understand this part. Let me go to the next step. Okay. And let me go to the next step. Okay, and here's the last part. Okay. So what we've done so far is we looked at the very beginning. Remember, every lesson has an introduction, like these are your objectives. And we look through, we're looking right now at one part of a lesson or one part of a, a column chapters. So there may be five parts of the chapter there may be two it, it varies with how many parts and that's the learning part and then at the end always we're going to assess you on that on that kind of chapter i'll call it chapters but i told you at the beginning there's also assessment pieces within within those lessons and here's one now we call those workbooks so let me go back and explain this so you've gone through this part of the the lesson okay you watch the video Okay, you went through there and you followed the step by step. Now, um, now it's going to say, okay, did you understand? Here's some problems, and and all the courses have this, whether that's English, math, science, social studies. Um, these are workbooks. Now, so it's this one is short. It only has like four questions. Um, so you, they're either true and false, matching, fill in the blank. Um, so as soon as I answer these, okay, here's my question, okay, and I, I answer, I'm just guessing if maybe it's that one, and I go to question two, okay, maybe it's that, I, I don't know, I'm just kind of randomly um, guessing these, okay, I go to the next one, I'm going to say there's no solution, now, I've answered that, okay, Again, these are workbooks. These are not the end of the lesson. Okay, these are within the lesson. Okay, now I'm ready and I hit submit. Okay, it's going to ask me, hey, are you sure you want to submit this? I'm going to submit that. Now, that grade, hey, look at that. I got, I got half right. That's pretty good for guessing. So that grade, so right now I got a 50 out of 100, which is not very good. So that grade's going to put that in your grade book as a student. And it's also going to put that grade in the teacher's grade book. Okay. And your parents will know that grade also. Now you have the option. Oh, that's not very good. You can retake that right here. If you wanted to retake that, you can do that. Now it's going to scramble. Uh, I think it scrambles the questions and the answers. It's going to scramble it. But hey, sometimes, you know, maybe you need to take it again. That's okay. You can do that. Okay. So that's just easy. And, and we, these are always located at the bottom of the lesson or at the end of the, um, at the end of the lesson, it's just going to be all those questions, some of the questions within and some without, they're going to be kind of scrambled. 
Okay. So now you'll know, hey, I went through one part of the lesson. Did I understand this? Yes or no? It's going to be able to tell you that. But the biggest thing is, is and it's going to give you a time step. So your teacher is going to know, hey, did Brad spend five minutes on that or did he spend an hour? It's going to, it's going to tell them that. So you want to spend your, they're going to know how much time and what's your grade. Okay. So let's go to the next part. So now I, I feel if it was me, I would do it again, but, but for our purposes, I won't move forward. Okay. So I'm like, okay, cool. I got this lesson. Let's go to the next one. So how do I go to the next part? It's right here to the next button. So now this is workbook or I call it sometimes chapter 12.2. Okay, and you'll see the same um, text um, or the audio on, on, on here. There's key terms for this part. Again, I can select those. It's going to pop that right up. There are the key terms that I need to know to understand this lesson. And I can go back by easily going right here. And you can see the important terms that are listed here. They're going to be in a different color and you can select those. And again, to scroll, I can just hold this or I can just move my mouse up and down. So I'm going down. Now, these key concepts and ideas or these things with the key, they'll be different colors and they mean different things. Like a red means, hey, this is probably going to be on a test. You need to really understand this. Um, blue is key concepts. Yellows are like reminders. So we built these in to say, hey, Stop for just a second. Make sure you read this and understand this. Okay, so now I'm just scrolling down. Okay, and this one has another video. This one's five minutes long. Okay, um, I think this one will be done by the same person. Let's take a look here and see. And four are not multiples of each other or factors of each other. So um, I'm going to actually go ahead and eliminate X because I see that I could multiply the top equation by two to get this to be 10x if I multiply it by. Okay, this one, this lesson has obviously two videos. Again, we do the videos in-house and we put those where they're most important. Um, as a student, I can tell you um, they're really important. I hope you don't skip over those. And again, all of our courses have some video in there. And there's a transcript. Now again, um, you can see I, I, at this lesson, I'm like, okay, that, that wasn't so long, but um, you, you can see, remember how we break things into chunks? Here's a plus button. So that means you need to open that up to see what that is. And, and this is a, a, a step equation that has six steps. So I want to continue through that. And there's a reason why we just don't list all those. It's a step by step. It's the same thing with English. It's the same thing with history. Okay, we're going to break things into smaller chunks with headings, subheadings, images, videos, things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So now you go down to the bottom of this um, lesson. So now, hey, we're going to check. Did you, did you understand that? And the same thing. And you'll see the same format for you to answer the questions. Okay, and again, as soon as you hit send, it's going to send that grade to your grades, and it's also going to send it to your teacher. So the teachers are always going to know, and you're going to always know where you're at, what your grades are. And you know you can find your grades over here, but again, that's more LMS. That's more Canvas stuff. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next part. So this would be workbook 12.3. We've done the introduction 12.1. 12.2, and now we're looking at 12.3. And, and the thing is, you'll see familiarity in this. And this same layout is going to look the same in all of our courses. So if you're in eighth grade and you're doing English, it's going to look the same as Algebra 2. It's going to look the same. So you're going to get the same feel. So when you go to each class, you know, sometimes you go to each class, you're like, oh, it's a different book, different teacher. Everything's the same. Well, the teachers are going to be different, but when you open up StrongMind, you're going to see familiarity in all these courses. So it's, it's going to be easier for you. Okay, I'm just scrolling down here. 
this one has a lot of videos. I know there's another video here. Okay, so this one's like three minutes. Um, and you'll see the same format. So, um, okay, um, Lynn, you'll kind of have to guide me. Again, the purpose of this was to tell you who is Strong Mind, what do we do, and then show you a little bit of one. So I just picked this lesson to kind of show you, just kind of walk you through. Um, I don't know, Lynn, is there anything else you want me to show or, or you kind of guide me here? Yeah, I think that's it. I just wanted to have the students take a look at it of um, uh, how the Strong Minds uh, curriculum is going to look um, uh, and how they would uh, maneuver through it. So I think that's good in the video that you showed. Sure. And, and okay, that's great. And Lynn, again, if, if you need me to send some more videos, I can. But um, for everybody, I, I thank you. It's very easy to um, move around, um, just hit the next button. If you need to go back, hit the previous. Uh, but I thank you all so much. And we so look forward to working with you. And Lynn, you know, if you need anything, let me know. But um, we thank you guys so much. And if there's any questions, I guess you guys would send those to Lynn and she would send those to me. Okay. Did everybody, I can see the screen. Can everybody see the screen? Because I guess uh, there's somebody writing in or something that the screen can't be seen. I can see it. Um, can everybody see it? I can see it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know who that is, but somebody. I can see my dear. Okay. All right. I thought, I thought maybe we didn't see, see the whole thing. Okay. All right. Great. Um, does anybody have any questions for Brad at this time? How many chances does it give you to um to take the take the test? Thank you, and I think I heard you right. How many chances do you get to take um take those um to take the workbooks? Um, yes. So yeah. So the Is work it? the the workbooks these um, are unlimited, so you can take them as many times as you want. Now the ones at the end end of the lesson, um, I think you get three. In the unit, the unit, I think you get one or maybe two. Um, but I'm, I'm not quite sure about those. I think it may, maybe only one. So these are unlimited. So if you mess up, take it again. You can always retake. That's my song. No, I'm here. No, I found it in the room. Okay. Okay. I have another question. When we're doing testing, how many testings could we get? The same? Or is it just up to until the child knows what's going on? Um, can, can you ask me that one more time? I'm sorry. <laughs> OK. If you're taking a test, how many tests could you take? Could you take one, two? Or is it up to until the child realizes what he's doing wrong? So, so how many? So with, with the workbooks, they can take this um, as many times as they want. Um, and then these, these count as a, as a grade. Um, and then at the end of the lesson, I think they get three tries on that. I mean, at the, at, at the, end, at the end of the lesson, yeah. Hey, thank you, that's what I was asking. <laughs> I have a question also. Yes. Um, what I was talking to you about the blank box is that like you just showed the module, I mean, the workbook section 12.3. Well, when you go to the next, uh, push the next button, mm -hmm. then it says uh, there's another box. It's, it's used as an assignment, but the on the top, it says, please don't forget to turn in your, um, your assignment or something workbook, it says at the top. But the rest of the page is just blank. So what is supposed to go in there? Or are the students supposed to know they're supposed to put something in that box? Because it's just blank. Yeah. I, 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 and I went, I, and that's a good question. Are you talking about this box or are you talking about the one previous? The one like after you do the lesson, after it shows you these steps and you do the, uh, so I teach social studies. Okay. So 
uh, one about the, the Romans, whatever, and then yeah. it goes into for seventh grade. Then it goes into the assignment, the article, the, the video. Then there's two questions. Then you go push the next button. Uh -huh. And the students will push the next button. And that one might be module one, two, or one, three. But the whole box is empty. And it says, please turn in your workbook assignment or something. It has on the very, just one line that tells them to, uh, this is right up like this. Please remember to submit your workbook workbook assignment, but there's nothing in the box. So what is supposed to go in that box? You no, know, I don't, I, I don't have that, um, but it sounds, um, well, two things. It sounds like um, if, if they completed their workbook, this is, um, this is what we call a workbook. So if they completed that and turned that in, it may just be an additional reminder. I don't know. I haven't seen that. But yeah. the other thing, if, and I'm assuming you're a teacher, is that right? Yes. If you have questions or something like that, I don't know if Lynn's, Ms. Lynn's told you or not, but you, you can send an um, email to um, success uh -huh. at strongmind.com. Okay. Um, and there may be a glitch or you may, I, I don't know. I haven't seen that and I apologize. Um, yeah, because I, I'm worried because the students, when they log on and go into their Canvas, that's what they're going to see. And they're going to ask me, what do they do with that box or that page, that assignment? I don't know. If, if it's, it's just blank. So yeah, I'm sort of... Um, I'm sort of stuck at, I want to be prepared to know what to say to them because I don't know. I mean, I would be like, um, sure. I'm, my question is same as yours because it, it does have the assignment. They read it. I went through it this morning and I, with my, with my assistant and we went through it. Then you go to the next, uh, to put after they finish it, then you go push the next button. And it has another heading, but then there's nothing in the box. It just says, "Please remember to submit your workbook." Well, if but there's, there's no, there's nothing in that box for them to do. Well, may, maybe there's maybe there's nothing for them to do in there. I don't know. I, you know, maybe that's just a maybe it's a glitch or an extra page, and you just move on from that. If it's yeah. if it's not, it would tell you like, "Hey, student." You need to turn yeah. this in, it'll be graded. But if it doesn't say that, yeah, doesn't there's no reason for nothing. them to, to do uh -huh. it. Yeah. And I just want to be prepared Monday when I, sure. when, I um, when they ask me that question. Yeah. Um, what do they do with that box? Yeah. I, I, you know, and I thank you for, but if you maybe send that email to success at strongmind.com. Okay. And in the meantime, it, it doesn't sound like, it's like maybe a glitch. Just, Go through it. I mean, there's nothing that if if we're not if we're not asking them to answer something, then it won't provide you feedback for the. I think that would be easier. Be strong mind, not strong so I would I would just email them, okay, and then um, I would just email them and then take a screenshot of it so they can see what you're talking about, and then they can. Okay. Please, thank you. Good question. Okay. All right. Uh, I thank you, Brad, for coming and uh, sharing with us, especially for the students who are on, uh, so they can just get a, a little glimpse, I guess, what it's what it is. Um, and um, thank you very much. Uh, for students, uh, just a reminder, um, not all of the classes are, um, are up and you can see them until the teachers publish it. So uh, don't worry about it if you go in and some of the classes you can't see till Monday when they publish them and then they'll be showing up, okay? Because that was one of the questions I think from some students going in that they couldn't see it. So on Monday, you should be able to see all your classes. If you don't, then you can let us know, but on Monday is when you'll be able to do that, okay? Okay, thank you, Brad. Okay, so we're going to continue on, and uh, I wanted to see, is uh, Kathleen on? Kathleen? Kathleen, are you on? Oh, okay. I'm going to go ahead and um, have Kathleen share a little bit about attendance in um, uh, we shared a little bit the other day of what we're expecting for attendance, but she wanted to um, 
we're going to have her go through a little bit in the handbook about attendance, okay? So I'm going to share my screen so she can go through that, okay? And then you can unmute yourself, Kathleen. Uh, let me go through. Whoops, wrong one. Uh, where is it now? Okay, there we go. Can everybody see this? Okay, go ahead, Kathleen. You can share with them. Kathleen, were you, did you unmute yourself and then you can go um, over it? Kathleen? Now? Okay, now we can hear you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Kathleen Otangla. I am going to be doing the student um, attendance this year. Let me go over a few important things here. Um, attendance. Uh, attendance absences for a student who is late 10, 10 minutes, who arrives into the class 10 minutes will be tardy when the bell rings. Excuse notes need to be submitted to the attendance clerk within the 48 hours upon return to class. So parents and guardians, you need to notify the um, school here prior to these absences. Um, you can see on the, on the board here, on the screen here, um, how we work this. The first to two tardies, they come from the teachers. The teachers will warn them about these tardies. Second tardies, a parent will be um, notified by the teacher. Um, all of this is on our policy handbook. So you will be receiving this um, soon, I hope. They, are, they will be going into the mail. But if you can um, look on the um, excuses. Tardies per semester goes like three tardies, four tardies, five tardies. Um, students, don't be tardy. Please don't be tardy. Like I said, the third tardy equals a whole day ex unexcused absence. And that's going to show on your um, attendance record, okay? So try to get to classes or sign in at 8.15 daily onto your canvas. I will be taking attendance after 8.30, putting them into the NASIS, um, my NASIS computer here. Um, it just, it'll just go on and on. Um, and again, a student will be counted as tardy if they arrive within the first 10 minutes of class. So please watch that. That's signing in after 10, 15, you will be counted tardy. 8, 15, I'm sorry. You will be counted tardy. Okay, and it goes on and unexcused absences per semester. Um, Three unexcused absences, I will meet with a student and notify the parent. So parents kind of push your kids to get online at the time I'm saying 8.15, so I don't have to be counting them um, absence, absent or tardy. Um, that, uh, Unexcused absences, five unexcused. They will meet with their academic counselors. Then a letter will be given to the parents, sent to the parents and copied to the principals and superintendent. Eight unexcused absences. They will meet with the behavioral committee. I need to find out who is on this committee and they will develop an attendance contract plan. And again, a letter will be copied to the parents, principals, and superintendent. 12 unexcused absences. That's getting really a lot of excuses here. Meeting with behavioral committee with possibility of scan procedure. That's um, reporting the student, I guess, to um, 
the BIE because of the um, many amounts of the unexcused absences. And again, a letter to parents, principals, and superintendents. Um, 15th unexcused absent, they will lose their credit and possible dismissal from school. And that does not sound good right there. So, but anyway, it goes on, it goes on and on, but please get the kids to sign in. My, my thing is get them to sign in to Canvas at 8.15. And like I said, I will be doing attendance at 8.30. It gives them that time to get to class and all the teachers to um, get their absences or um, kids in class by 8.30. So that's really about it. Uh, again, all this information is in our handbook, which, will, which the parents will be getting hopefully by next week. We are mailing them out, okay? Anything else, Miss Lynn? Do you need the second page or no? Um, not really, huh? I think okay. it's really all self-explanatory. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, all right. So thank you, Kathleen, and sharing that. Uh, Kathleen's going to be the new attendant clerk, okay? So, you know, uh, we're doing pretty good at people uh, logging in to your first hour. It's only taken one time a day, so 8.15, try to log in with your teachers. Um, let me, um, uh, did I get it in here? Um, I wanted to share something with you, but I think I didn't bring it up good here. Um, let me see if I can get it for you here. Uh, I had it all set, but it, it went off. Um, I wanted to share with you the math department put together a video too, and I didn't share it uh, in the morning. So I wanted to share it with you. I have to go into my email. I had it, had it all set, but I lost it here. So I can bring it up here. Oops. happen here. Hmm. I saw it there, then it didn't come back up. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just right in the stream. Nope. Sorry for this. I thought I had it set up. There it is. Okay, can you guys see this? Can somebody tell me if they could see it? Yes, I can see it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. Yes, and I can. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Mrs. Lamakima. I'll be teaching NPC dual enrollment math, personal finance, geometry, and GATE. I'm looking forward to teaching our students in our new virtual classrooms. I'm looking forward to working with parents and hopefully all of us working together, we can make this a great online educational experience. Can't wait to see everyone. The highlight the MIM Hopi High School at the Dukayani. The Dalas Hainem Yan Matiwa. The Hot Dangang Sino. The Pipunga Putapunga. Hi, my name is Anjanette Samia. I'm a math teacher here at Hopi High School. This school year, I will be teaching Algebra One and Algebra 2. 
I look forward to working with my students and parents and hoping for a successful school year. Welcome back. Uh, Mr. Tanakonva here. I hope you guys all had a wonderful summer. I look forward to the new school year. This year, I'm going to be teaching Algebra 1 and Geometry. See you guys soon. Hello, you mighty ruins. My name is Ms. Tewa. I teach seventh grade math. I would like to welcome you back and encourage you to have an awesome school year. Hello, Bruins. This is Ms. Nomoki. I am the eighth grade math teacher, so let's all have a great year. Okay, thank you, math department. And I guess that will end our week with the greetings from the math department. So thank you all for tuning in and uh, thank you all for your hard work and students uh, tuning in this week and getting your Canvas trainings done and, and logging into all of these live sessions. Um, next week will be the start of the school week. So um, we'll be getting started on, on Monday with your actual lessons. Remember on Monday, um, Mondays will be uh, recorded instruction. So you're going to go into your Canvas accounts and you'll see videos in there from your teachers and Mondays are the in recorded instruction. So you'll see videos uh, from your teachers of lessons or introductions and that's what you're gonna go through for Monday, okay? And then Tuesday, we'll start the uh, live synchronous of looking for your Zoom, Zoom meetings, okay? And um, going into Zoom meetings and then doing your work independently, okay? So uh, next week's gonna start our instruction. And so have a good weekend. And remember, if you're having problems, um, let your teachers know, particularly your first hour teacher who can help you out in your homeroom. And uh, don't look on the website uh, for the contacts uh, of IT or um, uh, the emails are on there if you need to contact IT or uh, anybody else on there uh, to get some assistance, okay? All right, thank you everybody for joining us for today.